All right, just going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic twisting of Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16, to prove their basically denial of free will in the context of salvation. And what, what essentially it comes down to is they're trying to use the exception to overthrow the rule in this matter. So what, again, what Calvinism, and you can have Calvinists that may say otherwise, but when you really get down to the core of Calvinism, they deny free will in the context of salvation. They say that you cannot choose God out of your own free will, and that he has to basically choose you and predestine you for salvation. Uh, but And this is one of the scriptures they like using to try to prove that. Uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16. So, like I said, Calvinists like using Paul's conversion in Acts chapter 9 to prove that God chooses those for salvation. Chooses who he wants for salvation. Calvinists use Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16 to prove that man has no free will in the context of salvation. Let's read it. Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my sake, for my name's sake. Okay? Now, they try to they home in on that, oh, see, he's a chosen vessel. See, God chose him for salvation. Now, I want to say something about that. Paul was indeed chosen by God to be an apostle to preach to the Gentiles. But that doesn't mean that Jesus Christ chose Paul for salvation in the context of God choosing some for election and others for damnation. That's not see what they're using is that uh, they're trying to use that to try to prove their point, but they're missing some some key. Uh, elements of what's going on. The first point is that even if Paul was chosen to be saved against his free will, this does not prove that mankind has no free will in the context of salvation since the exception does not overthrow the rule. That's another issue. The exception doesn't overthrow the rule. Okay? There would be no reason for Jesus Christ to tell Paul to preach repentance and faith to the Gentiles, Acts chapter 22, verse 16 to 20, if God already predetermined and preordained who will get saved and who won't. You know, if you are chosen for salvation, what's the point of even preaching the gospel then? There would be no reason for, for Jesus Christ to command Paul to preach the repentance and faith to the Gentiles. Repentance towards God and faith toward Jesus Christ, Acts chapter 20, verse 21, and Acts chapter 26, verse 20, is the free will choice of the unbeliever. Jesus Christ abraded the cities for not repenting, which presupposes they could have repented but chose not to. Um, uh, Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. Matthew chapter 11, verse 20. And, he, and then, then began he to abrade the cities, wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not, as if they could have done otherwise. Jesus Christ laments over Israel rejecting him, which presupposes they could have accepted him, but obviously chose not to. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. Matthew chapter 23, verse 37. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets, and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Ye would not. You see, he's blaming them for not repenting and believing and accepting him as their Messiah. Luke chapter 13, verse 34. O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, which killest the prophets, and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. He's holding them accountable. Men are held accountable for their actions and fail or failure to repent and have faith, which presupposes they have the ability to choose one or the other. Otherwise, God would have no reason to hold them accountable for something they have no control over. Uh, Luke chapter 14, verse 17 to 18. Luke chapter 14, verse 17 to 18. And sent his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. Began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have brought a piece of ground, and, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Interesting right there. See, they're refusing to hearken to his will. Reason right there, and I understand it's a parable, but it's proven the point that you have free will to choose repentance and faith, and he's holding them accountable if they don't. Why? Luke chapter nineteen, verse fourteen. Further proves my point. Luke chapter nineteen, verse fourteen. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him, saying, "We will not have this man to reign over us." And what happens in response? Well, Luke chapter 19, verse 27. But those mine enemies, which would not have that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. They're, they're, they're held accountable for their own actions. But you see, 
Calvinism essentially denies this. And that you can have Calvinists that will try to play little word games and try to say otherwise, but any true Calvinist will say that there's no free will in the context of salvation. And But we see here otherwise, like God is, is holding men accountable if they don't repent and have faith. Also in Matthew chapter 17, verse 17, Jesus rebukes those for being faithless, as if they could have done otherwise, but failed to do so. See, so Calvinists, they like to twist Acts chapter 9, verse 15 to 16 to prove that you have no free will, but they ignore that A, the, con the exceptions do not overthrow the rule, and B, you know, that's just one example, okay? And they ignore all the other examples of people being held accountable for not repenting and having faith. So that's the thing about Calvinism. They look for obscure passages that, that twist out of context and isolate, but ignore other other passages and they won't compare scripture with scripture. So don't be deceived by Calvinism. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.